Think Again by Adam Grant Book Summary. Let's do it. He's back. Organizational psychologist, professor at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania, New York Times bestselling author of The Originals, Give and Take, and Option B. His tires have been pumped by the likes of Bill Gates, Richard Branson, and even his fellow scholars Malcolm Gladwell and Daniel Kahneman. He's Adam Grant. And his latest, Think Again, The Power of Knowing What You Don't Know, is best described with this line from Adam himself. If knowledge is power, then what we don't know is wisdom. So buckle up as Adam shares some interesting methods in not only, not only developing a growth mindset, but also helping others do the same as well. Here are the five big ideas from Think Again. Big idea number one, be continuously curious. Curiosity may have killed the cat, but it's only helped the human race. Also, luckily cats have nine lives. Imagine if we weren't curious, the earth would still be flat, we wouldn't be flying, and we'd probably be still eating leaves. Being continually curious also has many upsides, but the most prominent one is helping shape identity. Here's what I mean. Have you ever met someone that was so committed and rock solid on their beliefs that they'd rather die than be open to another viewpoint? Their belief is their identity and the day it becomes invalid, they almost lose part of themselves. So rather than feel lost, they stick to the security of their viewpoint and never really open up to any others. That's why curiosity is so powerful. It helps us look at things more objectively. We can borrow a page from scientists and engineers. They're constantly curious, testing and learning. When something doesn't work out, they don't feel attacked. They just find other learnings to eventually create amazing things. Big idea number two, harness imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is when an individual looks at their own competence as largely lacking compared to what they actually are, which is awesome. They have so much skill, but they often head fake themselves into thinking they are just simply not up to snuff. And uh, I gotta say, I've been a member of the imposter syndrome club many times. And really, Adam points out that this isn't something we should be shying away from, but rather embrace fully and use it to our advantage. Think of imposter syndrome as a flame. If you don't control it, it'll consume you and burn you alive. But, but, if you can use it as your guiding light and a source of warmth and energy, you can do amazing things with it. This can be the form of motivation, a signal to work harder and smarter, a force to push you through all that you can do so you can close the gap and be the awesome person that you are. Now when the imposter syndrome feeling creeps in, I immediately associate as a spark to learn more and go hard. Big idea number three, create change through continuity. Now that you've gone through changing your own mind, we can now move on to changing others. I think we can all admit, but not many people like the idea of change. Adam says visions of change should be driven by visions of continuity. What this means is anchoring a change with something that's familiar. He gives the example of Steve Jobs and his resistance in making the iPhone. At the time of this video, the iPhone is a complete juggernaut. 
and it accounts for at least 40% of Apple's revenues. Crazy, right? Can you believe that Jobs was against this idea? Jobs hated cell phone carriers and their rules and really didn't want to be a part of it back in the day. However, members of the team slowly won Steve over by not talking so much about a phone. Instead, they framed it around the iPod, which was killing it at the time. So this is what they did. Music's in your pocket. A thousand songs. And also imagine if we can also make calls on it. Genius. Create change through continuity. Big idea number four, dance together. The art and science of helping others to rethink is very much like a dance. Hopefully smoother than that. You can't force them. Instead, you'll need to work together and collaborate. Adam has plenty of dance moves hidden in this book. Everything from finding common ground to saving your most powerful point until the end of the debate. Assuming you both exchange ideas and arguments, the tip that nabs the spotlight is literally asking the person, what would change your mind? Who would have thought this would be as simple as asking? And for the reason this takes a lot of the guesswork and helps you focus your time and energy in building your case for the rethinking process or at the very least for them to consider your points. Not to mention, hopefully you said it nicely because it signals that you're really trying to make an effort to understand them. Big idea number five, trust but verify. Here's the big one. The linchpin of the biggest knowledge bomb in the whole book. It full circle applies to others as well as oneself and it comes in the form of a question. How do you know that? Such a simple question and Adam perfectly illustrates its effectiveness in a story about a NASA astronaut who almost drowned in space due to an oversight in his equipment. Here's what went down. In 2013, Luca Permitano was on a spacewalk when more than a liter of water flooded his helmet filling his eyes, ears, and nose. If you can imagine floating around without the ability of sight, sound, and zero oxygen. Ugh. However, Luca managed to feel his way back to the space station and survived. Here's the even crazier thing. A week before the spacewalk, the team discovered water droplets in Luca's suit and thought it probably came from his drinking bag. They assumed it was harmless as it happened sometimes, so they simply replaced it and went about their day. If they asked the question, how do you know that? How do we know that? How, how do we know it really came from the drinking bag? They then would have discovered some contaminants that clogged up the holes in the suit to create the backup. To a lesser extent, with all the freely available information out there, how do we know what we're reading and consuming has any foundational truths or facts? It may not be as immediately life-threatening as drowning in space, but being misled can also be dangerous. Trust, but verify. And now for a recap. Big idea number one, be continuously curious. Big idea number two, Harness imposter syndrome. Big idea number three, create change through continuity. Big idea number four, dance together. Big idea number five, trust, but verify. This has been a summary for Think Again by Adam Grant. If you read the book, what were your key learnings? If you haven't read it, what key insights did you want to hear before picking it up? Leave any of those comments in the comment section below. I appreciate you stopping by. My name is Truman, and if you found this video helpful at all, 
please hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell. But apart from that, thank you again so much for checking this video out. I'll see you in the next one.